Good evening, everyone. I'm Garrett Barojan. That's B-O-O-R-O-J-I-A-N with Play On Sports High School Sports Network. And I am here live at Buddy Bufford Field in Lincolnton, Georgia. Tonight's matchup is one of two semifinal games in the GHSA Class 1A public high school playoffs between the number one ranked Lincoln County High School Red Devils of Region 7 versus the number four seeded Dooley County High School Bobcats of Region 4. The winner of tonight's game will play the winner of the Emanuel County Institute of Region 3 Division B and Wilcox County High School of Region 2 on December 15th at the Georgia Dome for the Class 1A Public State Championship. Both Lincoln County and Julie County have faced each other twice before, both times in the playoffs. The first time Lincoln lost to Julie, a score of 20-8 to in the Class A semifinals back in 1983. And then Julie lost to Lincoln 34-8 to in the Class A quarterfinals in 1998. Tonight's result will break that all-time tie of 1-1 and put one of these teams in the state championship game. And speaking of state championship games, when it comes to legacy in high school football, one doesn't have to look further than what has taken place on the gridiron for almost a century's time in Lincolnton, Georgia. I'll talk to you about significance of certain coaching records and keys and scouting reports to this game for both teams in a moment. Just first, to give you a better sense of the great magnitude of all of this, this is Lincoln County head coach Larry Campbell's 41st year as head coach, winner of 11 state championships in the Campbell era. 470 total coaching wins, which puts Coach Campbell third all-time in American high school football wins in the country. Impressive nonetheless. You know, I was told by a friend, a good friend of mine who's a Georgia native, this is a school that just simply lives football. And I'll also talk about the Lincoln legacy more in this broadcast. Lincoln County goes up against a Dooley County squad that's been around for a few decades, long time in its own right, never have won a state championship, coming close back in 1983, but the small town of Vienna has re really garnered attention the past couple of years with ESPN's seventh ranked high school player of the nation, defensive tackle Montrevious Adams. Look out for him, his high skill level and dominant defensive presence on the football field is anticipated by many, especially college scouts out here who made the trip to Lincolnton to be a deciding factor in this, the outcome of this game. But we shall see as this game will begin momentarily. I can feel the intensity from the press box. It's pandemonium here. The crowd is getting ready. The players are getting ready. Cool, little brisk night here in Lincolnton, Georgia. And the game will start momentarily. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. I did it right, right? Okay. I said Bobcats, right? That's yeah. Again, you are Again, you are watching this game on the Play on Sports High School Sports Network at www.playonsports.com. Thank you for making Play On Sports your choice for high school sports. This Friday night, Play On Sports High School lives here. Remember, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Play on Sports, hashtag GHSA football. For all the best coverage of Georgia football throughout the playoffs, go to WSBTV.com. And for live scoring and highlights of GHSA football playoffs produced by Play on Sports, 
go to www.playonsports.com slash GA football playoffs. We are just getting ready for kickoff. It's Lincoln County and Dooley County. Lincoln County was able to hold off Wilkinson County High School twice this season. Once back in week nine, a 21-19 victory. And the other was last week In the quarterfinals, Lincoln County was able to run the ball, eating up the clock in the final minutes to hold on for the victory, 28 to 22. And kickoff is underway. And that is number 27, and he gets tackled. And that was Jalen Franklin. Jalen Franklin was able to return that 17 yards and we're getting ready for first down and 10. The ball is on the 27 yard line. Blake Murray in motion. We got a run and a quick, quick stop by Dooley County. And that is number 55, Jaleel Brown. And that was also helped by Montrevious Adams, the senior defensive tackle. ESPN has him ranked the number seventh recruit in the country, number one in his position. We have second down and 10 on the 27 yard line. We have a throw to Jalen Franklin and he is able to complete the pass and run up field. And that was a gain of 16 yards. Moves the chains for a first and 10. First and 10 on the 43 yard line on the Red Devils 43 yard line. It is again, first and 10 and we are ready, a snap. And that is a run for about maybe a few yards to the 45 yard line. Gained about two yards on the play. Montrevious Adams. Adams with another tackle. Second down and eight on the 45. And that was Ben Turner throwing an incomplete pass. He was hit as he threw. And the ball sails out of bounds. It is third down and nine. Again, this is Coach Larry Campbell's 41st year as head coach of the Red Devils. He has 11 state championships. And he's looking to take his team back to the state championship again for number 12. Another ball sails out of bounds by Ben Turner, and the Red Devils will have to punt on their 45-yard line.
Number 12, Chris Lundy. Chris Lundy of the Dooley County Bobcats is set to return the punt. And he'll just let it bounce. Out of bounds, no return. And the ball landed and stops at the 22 yard line. The Dooley County Bobcats 22 yard line and they will set up shop there and start their opening drive. Got number 24, Zachary Hooks in motion. And that is number four, Courtney Clark. Who's only able to get three yards on the play before he's taken out of bounds by a couple of red jerseys. Second down and six with 9.27 left of the first quarter. Got the I formation. Two receivers to the right. And that was number 25, Shannon Hamilton. Able to get three yards on the play. So we're looking down at a, we are looking at a third down and four. And that was a run. And Martel Murray was able to make the stop on that play, and now it is fourth down. And the Dooley County Bobcats will have to punt on their opening drive. And Montravius Adams will punt the ball to number 26 of the Red Devils, and he's, and he's able to avoid some tackles but not until he's brought down at the 36 yard line. He's able to stay on his feet a little bit. And we are looking at a first down and 10. On the Red Devils 36 yard line. Got the spread formation. Number 26 is in motion. And Ben, ben Turner keeps it himself. That was a tackle made by the Dooley County Bobcats, Jalen Daniels. We got spread formation again. Turner finds Blake Murray and he is able to hold on for the catch. Oh no, broken up. Excuse me, that was broken up. So it is a third down and seven. He was, uh, was not able to hold on. You have three wide receivers bunched to the right, and they find Ben Turner finds Jalen Franklin, and he's able to get past midfield, and that's going to be enough to move the chains for a first down. Gain of 14 on the play. 
First and 10 Red Devils, they're in the Dooley County Bobcats territory. Zyrikas Letman in motion, gets to back to the line of scrimmage. And that is another run. That is another run by Ben Turner. And he's able to move a couple of yards upfield. Make it three, so we're looking at a second down and seven with 6.26 left to go. And there is Mike McIntyre, runs outside, and he is brought down. At the 42 yard line, it is third down and seven. Got some substitutions for the Lincoln County Red Devils. They change the spot of the ball. It is third down and five. Third down and five at the 42. Turner finds Jamar Nor Norman, who's able to make a, a little juke move. And he is able to move the chains. And it's a fresh first down for the Red Devils at the Bobcats 35 yard line. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this is the third meeting all time between Dooley County and Lincoln County. And there is a run by Mike McIntyre, and he gets about two yards on the play. Second down and eight on the 33. There's Turner. Throws over the head of number eight, Zyrikas Letman, the junior receiver for Lincoln County. Just to give you a sense of how effective Lincoln County's Offensive players have been. Zyrikas Letman prior to this game, 46 catches for 599 yards and nine touchdowns. Mike McIntyre running back prior to this prior to this game. 1,315 yards on the ground, 18 touchdowns on 170 carries. So Lincoln County has a bunch of offensive weapons to go to. Looks like Lincoln County is looking at a fourth and eight on the 33, but they're going to punt. Not a deep, not a deep punt. Maybe goes about 20. Maybe goes about 20 yards. First and 10, the Bobcats will take it on their 22-yard line. If Dooley beats Lincoln tonight and Wilcox beats Emanuel County Institute in the other semifinal game of the Class A GHSA playoffs, there will be a rematch from earlier in the season for the Class A championship. Dooley had lost to Wilcox earlier in the year, 28 to 14. One of their two losses. They also lost to Marion County. But if you're a Dooley County fan, 
you would like revenge against Wilcox for the state championship game. So that was gain of seven on first down. So it is second down and three. And there's a run by number 25, Shannon Hamilton, the sophomore running back for Julie County. We have 336 left in the first quarter. That was a tackle by Jalen Smith of Lincoln County. And we are looking at a third down and four on the 29 yard line. Scoreless here in the first quarter. Both offenses are having a hard time moving the ball, but both defenses are playing well thus far. And we almost get a pick six by number 27, Jalen Franklin. The ball just bobbled in his hands, couldn't grasp, and it falls to the ground. And that would have broke this tie the scoreless tie here in the first quarter. But you gotta, if you're a Red Devils fan, Coach Campbell has to be happy for his defense playing heads up. Jimmy Hughes' team loves to throw the ball. And the Red Devils almost capitalized there's Montravius Adams punting the ball again, and that ball will end up around the 27-yard line in Red Devils territory. So another punt in this game, a 42-yard punt by Montravius Adams. Again, join us about high school sports, join the conversation. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Play on Sports, hashtag GHSA football. And that was an incomplete pass. And now it's second down and 10, 27 yard line for the Red Devils. Pass is broken up at the, li at the line of scrimmage. We had Jamar Norman in motion, which ends up in a Ben Turner carry. And he's able to get four yards on the play. That was a ta tackle by number 22 of Dooley County, Mark Clark, the junior linebacker for the team. We have spread formation, three bunch wide receivers to the right, and a sack. And that is number one, Jalen Daniels. The senior defensive end was able to get to number 18, Ben Turner of Lincoln County. And that brings up another fourth down. So both defenses are coming here to play tonight. Something tells me this is going to be a low scoring game. Just less than two minutes left to go. Fewer than two minutes. Another punt. And a fumble. And number 12, Chris Lundy, is not able to handle the punt return catch. And he just watches it get into the possession of the Lincoln County Red Devils and he is beside himself and he is clearly frustrated and that's going to give Red Devils great field position possibly trying to score before the first quarter is over. Shotgun formation and that is overthrown by Ben Turner 
was looking for Zyrikis Letman. And that is a run by number 11, Mike McIntyre, on second down. He's able to get seven yards on the play. Ball spot at the 23-yard line of Dooley County. Dooley County territory. And the Red Devils catch a break here. Just when you thought that both offenses were struggling Red Devils lucky to be dealing with a short field. As a, a fake throw by Ben Turner. Ball ends up getting handed off to his running back. And it's no gain on up oh, two yards on the play. So it's a fourth and one, and looks like the Red Devils will be going for it on fourth down. It is, again, fourth and one on the 20-yard line. And he is able to get enough for the first. That is number 11, Mike McIntyre. Moves the chains. And the Red Devils are in the red zone. With less than, less than a minute left to play in the first quarter. That was a gain of five by Mike McIntyre. Again, for all the best coverage of Georgia football throughout the playoffs, go to WSBTV.com. Another run by Ben Turner. And it, it looks like it might be a fumble. It is. It is a fumble by Ben Turner. And that will be a first and 10. That will be a first and 10 at the nine yard line for Dooley County. So Red, Devil, Red Devils not able to capitalize. So you have a mistake on the Dooley County special teams and then a mistake coughing up the ball was Lincoln County and now Julie County has the ball, but they are deep in their own territory. And we have a stoppage of play. Let's see what the call is. Again, my name is Garrett Barogian. With Play on Sports, High School Sports Network. We have a false start on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. And I am calling this game outside on top of the press box. It's a great view here tonight. Earlier before the game, we had fire trucks and police, police squad cars directing traffic and making sure that everybody was getting to their seats. And it's a fantastic Friday night here in Lincolnton. We have... A throw and catch, that's A.J. Smith. Finding his receiver. Tyrone Anderson, that's the senior wide receiver for Dooley County. Second down and one for Dooley County. And that is the end of the first quarter. The score is... 0-0. Zero, zero. So far we've seen both offenses both offenses struggling to move the ball. You did have Lincoln County what looked as though that they were going to capitalize on Julie County's mistake on special teams putting Lincoln County in great field position. But Lincoln County then in return coughed up the ball and that's where we are now. Dooley County 
with the ball, second and one on their 19-yard line. And we'll be right back after this on the Play on Sports High School Sports Network. Get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com. And we are back at the start of the second quarter. Again, the score is, if, for those of you just joining us, it is no score with Dooley County with the ball on second down. And let's see if they were able to move the chains. Depends on where the ball was spotted. That was Murray on the tackle for the Red Devils, but not before Julie County can get the first down. So it, they are on their 20-yard line. A.J. Smith was scrambling in the pocket, didn't know who to throw to, and that is an incomplete pass. That was intended for number four, Courtney Clark. A second down and 10 for Julie County. Three wideouts. And they go with the run play and swarming red jerseys. And Shannon Hamilton was not able to go anywhere on that play. No gain on the play. Third and ten. And, and, look, and look at Mark Clark able to make something out of nothing. Looked like he was going to get tackled, but able to get a few more yards on the ground. Almost thought for a second that A.J. Smith was going to get sacked, but the ball ends up in the hands of Mark Clark. He's able to get six yards on the play, but Julie County again will have to punt the ball and their own territory. And that was a tackle on Mark Clark. That was a tackle by Zyrikus Letman. And the ball is punted. Montrevious Adams with a 38-yard punt. And the ball for the Red Devils will be spotted at 37-yard line. First and 10 for the Red Devils with 9.45 left to go in the first half. Ben Turner was able to find Blake Murray as he was tackled out of bounds. That is a complete pass. Short gain on a play, but pretty tough catch nonetheless. And it's second down and six at the Red Devils 41-yard line.
And another fumble. And Mike McIntyre is able to come up with this one and able to recover his own fumble. And the Red Devils are able to keep possession. That was Deshaun Wiley on the tackle for Dooley County. And the Red Devils are looking at a third down and six on their 41. And that is number four. Glenn Creech, number four for the Red Devils. Able to get, able to make the catch, but another fourth down and the Red Devils will have to punt again themselves. And looks like looks like they're getting out of punt formation and they, they might be going for it. And a timeout is called. For live scoring and highlights of GHSA football playoffs produced by Play On Sports, go to www.playonsports.com slash GA football playoffs. We have another Red Devils punt. And that ball will be spotted at the 19 yard line. You know, just to give you a sense of Coach Larry Campbell's career for the Red Devils. He has an all time record of 470 wins, 80 losses and three ties in 41 years of head coaching. He has the most football wins in the state of Georgia, third most high school football wins in the country behind John T. Curtis Jr. of Louisiana, who's in second place, and John McKissick of South Carolina in first place. Interesting story about John McKissick right after this play. And that is a run by Dooley County. J you know, you, you think Coach Campbell's been coaching for a long time. Coach McKissick has been coaching for 20 more years. His 61st, 61st season for the Somerville High School Green Wave in South Carolina. He has won 601 games, 601 games. He's the only coach in American football history at any level to win 600 games. To put it in perspective, Don Shula, who coached the Baltimore Colts and the Miami Dolphins in the NFL, he has a total of 347 wins, counting the postseason, while the newly retired John Gagliardi of college football has a record 489 wins. So that just gives you a sense of where Coach Campbell is at in terms of how many wins he has and where Coach McKissick is at in South Carolina, you know, before this game I was doing the research and it was just mind-boggling trying to crunch all these numbers. And that's number seven. That's number seven, A.J. Smith, to his receiver, Courtney Clark. That was a gain of 19 on the play. There's a first down and 10 on the 42-yard line for Dooley County. The score is still 0-0.
with 6.16 left to go in the half. And we get a pitch, and that's 34. And he is breaking all the way, possibly, nope. And he loses the ball, but not before he's brought out of bounds. That is a dead ball that will not be a fumble. And that was number 34 of Dooley County, Mark Lloyd, who was able to get to the outside, got good blocks, and able to take that ball to the 20 yard line of the Red Devils. And the Red Devils are a little bit of trouble here. Possibly the biggest run play of the game so far for Dooley County. And they're looking at a first and 10 on their 20 with 6.04 left to go. They got three wide receivers. And there's number 34, Mark Lloyd again. We're looking down at a second down and four. on the 14 yard line for Julie County. And that was Shannon Hamilton. Possibly only gets a couple yards on the play. He actually runs into AJ Smith. They bump into each other, which kind of slows down Hamilton's momentum. Third down for the Bobcats, and they are trying desperately to score here. If you are a Bobcats fan, you're looking for a sign of relief to see which team scores first. That is a throw, and it's over the head of number three. And they tried to throw the ball to Montravius Adams in the end zone. It was a little bit over his head. And A.J. Smith was a little bit rushed on that play. So we're looking down at a second down and 10 on the 10 yard line. And Mark Lloyd is in trouble and he gets Stopped in the backfield. That is a tackle by number 24, Martrell Murray. And uh, Lincoln County. Holding its own here on defense. Trying to keep Dooley County out of the end zone. Got Courtney Clark on one side. Got Tyrone Anderson on the other as the wide receivers. And A.J. Smith is not able to go anywhere. And he is a little bit confused. Did it not, a few times now that he scrambled in the pocket but not knowing where to throw to or who to throw to. And you can see his coach trying to, one of his coaches trying to speak with him and trying to uh, figure out what the problem seems to be he has not been able to run his offense in key situations to move the chains. And we are looking at a field goal attempt for Dooley County. Dooley County calls a timeout. Energy for the Georgia High School football playoffs brought to you by Georgia's Peanut Farmers.
for live scoring and highlights of GHSA football playoffs produced by Play On Sports, go to www.playonsports.com slash GA football playoffs. For all the best coverage of Georgia football throughout the playoffs, go to wsbtv.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Play On Sports, hashtag GHSA football. And I'm Garrett Rogan with Play On Sports High School Sports Network. Thank you for making us part of your Friday evening in high school sports. The kick is up. And the field goal is good. And that is a 32-yard field goal by number 26, Diego Cruz, and Dooley County is on the board. It is three to nothing. Three to nothing with 3.43 left to go in the first half. This is my second game, second live game for calling for play on sports. First game I called was in Flowery Branch a couple of weeks ago. I was actually in their press box, and now I'm outside on top of the Red Devils press, press box. So it's a little different feel. Best of both worlds during the month of December being inside and outside calling a game, but I'm loving every minute of it. And that was Jamar Norman on the return. Fourteen yards on the return for Norman. And the Red Devils are looking at a first and ten on their 37-yard line with 335 left to go in the first half. You know, a couple notable alumni from Lincoln County, former NFL running back Garrison Hurst was a two-time Pro Bowl selection, two-time AP NFL Comeback Player of the Year. Spent the majority of his career with the San Francisco 49ers. And current NFL defensive end Jarius Wynn, he won a Super Bowl with the Green Bay Packers in Super Bowl 45. Now currently or currently plays for the Tennessee Titans, excuse me, currently plays for the Tennessee Titans. And there's Ben Turner, able to scramble in the pocket before he's able to move upfield, gets out of bounds. Able to move the chains, it is first down for the Red Devils. He's able to stop the clock. Oh, and he does not, excuse me, does not move the chains. It's a third and one, so he was just shy. So Red Devils are looking, looking to move the chains on this play. Lincoln County loves to run the spread formation. Three, four, five wide receiver horizontal sets. You have a timeout on the play. Georgia Electric Membership Corporation is proud to present the Cooperative Spirit Sportsmanship Awards each year to you know, the top schools in East Speaking with Coach Campbell field. earlier in the week, he was telling me how the evolution of his offenses throughout his career, you know, for the past three years, he's told me that he likes his team to run the spread formation. You know, in earlier years, he, he wanted to run the I formation and the triple option more often is when he used to have more running backs on his team in those years. And 
He's also a favor to the double wing formation. And these offenses, these offensive sets, he likes to intermingle to keep defenses off balance. He, he told me he likes to just run the ball based on what the defense gives his team, whether it's running or passing. But he feels like his team is more of a running team. First and 10 for the Red Devils at the 49 yard line. Turner, and that is a drop. That is a drop by Jalen Franklin. Second down and 10. Mention keys to this game so far. It looks like both teams have been trying to run the ball unsuccessfully, of course. Both defenses are quite strong here tonight. Seems like the Lincoln offense has had, a, has had a little trouble trying to contain Montrevious Adams, who prior to this game had five and a half sacks on the season. He's able to pressure QBs very well and tackle well in the open field. Lincoln has a very young offensive line, and that's why we've seen Ben Turner get frustrated in the pocket. But he has still been able to, like that play you just saw, he has still been able to make key throws. That was a gain of 13. So in key situations, he has been able to make key throws. But if you're Lincoln County, you're wanting to you're wanting to confuse the defense with different offensive schemes for running backs to get good penetration and good blocking to allow running backs to get into the secondary. And we've seen Lincoln County do that a little bit, but they're still having difficulty. Julie County was able to get that one big run. And that is another catch by number 27, Jalen Franklin. Mark Clark on the tackle. That was a gain of six on the play. There's only one minute and 11 seconds left to go. And the Red Devils are frantically trying to get the ball upfield to try to take a lead. And that was a completed pass from Turner to Letman on the slant. And that was a tackle by Lundy by the Bobcats and his first and 10 with 50 seconds left to go on the 22 yard line. Turner dropping back, he throws, he airs it out and almost a touchdown but the, he is not able to bring it in. Pass incomplete to Zyrikis Letman. Chris Lundy broke up that play. So speaking of, speaking of the offensive line for Lincoln County, Coach Campbell was telling me earlier in the week that he had three offensive linemen graduated. Last year. He had three offensive linemen graduate last year. 
one offensive lineman broke his leg and another offensive lineman tore his ACL this year. So Coach Campbell is starting eight sophomores. You know, he says that the receivers and the defensive backs, and we have seen that, are the strongest part of the Lincoln County the Lincoln County, excuse me, the Lincoln County football team. We almost saw that pick six almost by number 27, Jalen Franklin, earlier in this game. And that was Mike, Mike McIntyre on the carry to the outside. 26 seconds left to go. Let's see how... Lincoln County is able to manage the clock here. Now 18 seconds left. They do have one timeout. And looks like they're just going to let the clock run out. Excuse me. Call a timeout. Excuse me. With two point seven seconds left to go so let's see if they go for a field goal or maybe just one shot toward the end zone probably safer bet is to go with the field goal to tie this game to send it into halftime going back to the Lincoln County team their their weakest part you know coach Campbell told me is their offensive line but you can make a case that their offensive line has protected as much as as much as they can protecting Ben Turner in the pocket and clearly Lincoln County is holding this Dooley County offense just three points going into halftime so if you're a Lincoln County fan you got to give yourself or give your team credit for holding this explosive offense to only three points. And that is a block! That is a block! Field goal kick, and there he goes! That is number 22 for Dooley County. Mark Clark. And he is able to take it back. Goes the distance. And he extends this Dooley County lead to nine to nothing. And Lincoln County can't believe it. Just when they thought that they were gonna be tying up this game, going into halftime, make a critical error and Mark Clark capitalizes for Dooley County. And he takes it back. I would say about 85, 90 yards for the touchdown. Wow. All happened so fast. And I am on the Dooley County side, the fan side that is. And I can just see in a distance, the Red Devils fans are just stunned. No emotion whatsoever. Can't believe what just happened. And it is nine to nothing, Dooley County. So they will have a chance at an extra point or a two point conversion. Let's see what they choose. And they will go, looks like they will be going for that extra point. Try to make it 10 nothing going into halftime. And I guess I spoke too soon because it looks like Coach Campbell's special teams was not able was not able to protect its kicker in that play. 
and that defense by Dooley County just swarmed and blocked that kick. And Mark Clark just picked it up and ran the other way. Looks like we have some confusion on the field. I think both teams are just waiting to get into the locker room. Lincoln County already making their way into the locker room and Dooley County is going to fall just behind them. So with a score of 10-0, it is the end of the first half. Again, this is Play on Sports, High School Sports Network. Your place for high school sports. High school lives here. We'll be right back after these messages. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. here away from it all a guy can get to thinking what makes peanuts america's most popular nut well for one thing they've got more antioxidants than broccoli carrots or even green tea why they're a bona fide superfood with more than 30 vitamins and nutrients and the taste well that's pretty hard to beat yes when you really think about it good things happen for a reason i'm nick marshall and i'm a peanut farmer i dig peanuts so you can dig them too Coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One shot at this. Out here, away from it all, a guy can get to thinking. What makes peanuts America's most popular nut? Well, for one thing, they've got more antioxidants than broccoli, carrots, or even green tea. Why, they're a bona fide superfood with more than 30 vitamins and nutrients. And the taste, well, that's pretty hard to beat. Yes, when you really think about it, good things happen for a reason. I'm Nick Marshall, and I'm a peanut farmer. I dig peanuts, so you can dig them too. Good stuff. All right, perfect. 
prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. Out here, away from it all, a guy can get to thinking. What makes Peanuts America's most popular nut? Well, for one thing, they've got more antioxidants than broccoli, carrots, or even green tea. Why, they're a bona fide superfood with more than 30 vitamins and nutrients. And the taste? Well, that's pretty hard to beat. Yes, when you really think about it, good things happen for a reason. I'm Nick Marshall, and I'm a peanut farmer. I dig peanuts, so you can dig them too. Stream, camera three, beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. Out here, away from it all, a guy can get to thinking. What makes Peanuts America's most popular nut? Well, for one thing, they've got more antioxidants than broccoli, carrots, or even green tea. Why, they're a bona fide superfood with more than 30 vitamins and nutrients. And the taste? Well, that's pretty hard to beat. Yes, when you really think about it, good things happen for a reason. I'm Nick Marshall, and I'm a peanut farmer. I dig peanuts, so you can dig them too. Stream, camera three, beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One shot at this. Out here, away from it all, a guy can get to thinking. What makes Peanuts America's most popular nut? 
Well, for one thing, they've got more antioxidants than broccoli, carrots, or even green tea. Why, they're a bona fide superfood with more than 30 vitamins and nutrients. And the taste, well, that's pretty hard to beat. Yes, when you really think about it, good things happen for a reason. I'm Nick Marshall, and I'm a peanut farmer. I dig peanuts, so you can dig them too. Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. Out here, away from it all, a guy can get to thinking. What makes peanuts America's most popular nut? Well, for one thing, they've got more antioxidants than broccoli, carrots, or even green tea. Why, they're a bona fide superfood with more than 30 vitamins and nutrients. And the taste, well, that's pretty hard to beat. Guess when you really think about it, good things happen for a reason. I'm Nick Marshall, and I'm a peanut farmer. I dig peanuts, so you can dig them too. Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One shot at this. Out here, away from it all, a guy can get to thinking. What makes peanuts America's most popular nut? Well, for one thing, they've got more antioxidants than broccoli, carrots, or even green tea. Why, they're a bona fide superfood with more than 30 vitamins and nutrients. And the taste, well, that's pretty hard to beat. Guess when you really think about it, good things happen for a reason. I'm Nick Marshall, and I'm a peanut farmer. I dig peanuts, so you can dig them too. Oh, 
prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. here away from it all a guy can get to thinking what makes peanuts america's most popular nut well for one thing they've got more antioxidants than broccoli carrots or even green tea why they're a bona fide superfood with more than 30 vitamins and nutrients and the taste well that's pretty hard to beat yes when you really think about it good things happen for a reason i'm nick Welcome back, everyone, and we are at Buddy Budford Field in Lincolnton, Georgia, on this cold Friday night in December. The score is 10-0, Dooley County Bobcats over the home team, Lincoln County Red Devils. Just to recap the score to the first half, just one field goal by Dooley County and right before the first half was coming to a close the Red Devils were looking to kick a field goal and that field goal was blocked and that was taken back 90 yards by Dooley County's Mark Clark and that's your score at halftime 10-0 Dooley County again the winner of tonight's game will play the winner of Emanuel County Institute, the Class A Region 3 Division B, and or the Wilcox High School Class A Region 2. The winner of those, of that game, excuse me, the winner of that game will play in the GHSA Class A Public School State Championship game on December 15th in, at the Georgia Dome. Just to talk a little bit about the people involved in this game, Montravius Adams for Dooley County is what ESPN says is the number seventh recruit in the country, number one at his position at defensive defensive tackle. SET, SEC teams such as Georgia, Clemson, Alabama, Florida, Auburn, as far west as the California Golden Bears in the Pac-12, the Michigan Wolverines in the Big Ten, the Miami Hurricanes in the ACC, those schools and many more are have offered Montravius Adams a scholarship to play for, for for them for one of them next year, but Montravius is still undecided. He has not declared yet. You know, I've never watched him in person before personally, but with just watching his YouTube videos and just seeing him play tonight, you can see that he is quick to the ball, dominating run stopper, really athletic, quick, and mobile. For a guy who is 6'3", 6'4", around 280, 290 pounds, um, I'm sure any team would be happy to have someone of, of his uh, presence and high skill level to be playing for them next year. Again, it is 10-0 at halftime. And Dooley County is hoping to make it to their second state championship game in their school history. 
And that's for the Red Devils. They're hoping to go on to the state championship game this this season. And if they win, that will be their 15th state championship. 12, 12 of those 15 in the Larry Campbell era. You know, I was talking to Coach Campbell earlier, earlier this week, and he was just telling me about the, tr the tradition, the legacy that he wants to leave for this team. He's been coaching for 41 years. Uh, he's lived in Lincolnton his whole life. He's always enjoyed athletics. He played college baseball at the University of Georgia. He told me he had the opportunity to coach at higher levels, but decided to stay at the high school level. Uh, felt like you know this was his home. This was his place to be and to grow and to and to be around and mentor uh, high school athletes. You know he describes Lincolnton as a huge football community, and I've been told by others too that this is a huge football community, just a rich, winning football tradition in this town. It's a small community. Everybody knows each other. It's generational. I mean, Larry Campbell's told me that he's been coaching players and their fathers and even some of their grandfathers. Uh, that's how far back his, his influence goes in this school. And he says that the place to be during football season in Lincoln County is at the stadium. And Lincoln County football is always filling up when they go on the road, they are always filling up opposing school stands. So whether they're home or away, he says that they always have, they always have tradition following them wherever they go. It's a, it's a pride. It's, it's the Red Devils. He says, he says it's, the, you know, it's what makes the team what it is. It, it's the, it's the support. It's the camaraderie of the players. It's the. It's just what Red Devils have st stood for, as he told me, you know, the almost the past century. Uh, the first Red Devils game was back in 1922, and uh, they've won over 85% of their home games at Buffett Stadium. You know, he says that he, when he thinks about John McKissick at South Carolina, how McKissick has been coaching for 61 years and has 601 victories, and he's the all-time winningest, winningest football coach at, of any level. He thinks, I don't know. He tells me, I don't know if I'll be coaching that long. I'll coach until I just don't have the feeling or desire to coach any longer but he says Larry Campbell says that he's feeling good and you know he really doesn't care about you know he told me when I asked him how many state championships do you have how many how many wins do you have he told me well you're just gonna have to ask my uh, my uh, assistant down at the school I don't keep track of records and I don't keep track of how many state championships I've won it's just been a you know I just care about mentoring kids and I've been just, I feel like, you know, he says, he told me he's been feeling like he's been watching over kids other than his own. You know, he does have a son and a daughter. He has two grandchildren, one three years old, one seven years old, another one on the way. And his son was actually a trainer uh, at the University of Georgia. Um, son also went to UGA as well. And it's nice to see, you know, he tells me it's nice to see that his family is all together and he says you know at one point when he does retire when he does retire he he just wants to spend time with his kids his grandkids and you know his parents actually are still alive and well which is was which was very good and which was great to hear and, and uh, he just wants to spend time with his family as much as possible because you know he feels like you know 
after you know coaching so many years and so many teams you know it's nice that he can finally spend time with his family and we just have the kickoff underway and it's the start of the third quarter and Julie County has the ball and they take it back to their 29 yard line and that was Norman on the tackle So prior to this game, A.J. Smith had 1,920 yards passing and 17 touchdowns. Let's see if we see him air it out in the second half um, because a 10-0 lead is still too small for Lincoln County to try to get back. Obviously, it's just a 10-0 game to try to get back in this game. Um, the score is really not an indication of really the pace of this game. Um, you would think that it'd be a higher score, but you know, I guess with all the punts and the back and forth of mixing of running and passing plays, it has felt like a more uh, fast paced uh, type game. So we were at first down and six. And A.J. Smith. And that is a completed pass from A.J. Smith to Courtney Clark. And Jamar Norman on the tackle. For the first down and 10 for the Julie County Bobcats at the 40-yard line. Handoff, and that is number 25, and he's able to stay on his feet, and he gets out of bounds. That is Channon, Channon Hamilton. Taylor on the tackle, and that was a run. Looks like there's a flag on the play. It was a personal foul, unnecessary roughness by Lincoln County. That is a 15-yard penalty, a 15-yard penalty. And Dooley County is now on their 26-yard line. Excuse me, Dooley County is now on the Red Devils' 26-yard line. And again, they hand it off to... Shannon Hamilton. Lockhart on the tackle. Shannon went for six yards. Ball is spotted at the 20 yard line. And let's see if Dooley can capitalize on their opening drive of the second half. Another run by Hamilton. And I think just seeing how the pace of this game has been going, that Julie County feels like they can run the ball on this small offensive line that hasn't been able to stop the run, as in Lincoln County. That play went nowhere in a hurry. But enough for the first down. And as a first down and 10 on the 16 yard line. Now, if you're a Julie County fan, you got to be happy for Montrevious Adams because he has scouts from college teams, some of those teams that I mentioned earlier. And it's, you know, if you're a Julie County fan, 
or if you're just a f sports fan in general who's been, you know, preparing to cover this game, such, such as someone like me, I'm curious to see where the young fellow goes and, you know, it's always nice to see players work really hard and make the next transition to a higher level, something that they've been wanting to achieve all their life. And there's a second down and six. And A.J. Smith gets sacked by number 42, D. Jones. I was mentioning the Lincoln County offensive line earlier. In this case, the defensive line has been, has been doing a little bit better job than the offensive line for Lincoln County. Defensive line was able to, as you saw earlier, able to get or stop Dooley County, and that was D. Jones on that play. We have a false start. We have a false start on Dooley County. That's five yards, and that will take them back to the 27 yard line. It's second down and 23. You know, a couple players, one including Zyrikus Letman on Lincoln County is committed to a D2 school. So some, obviously we can see there's definitely talent on the Lincoln County and <laughs> talent like number 24. Mortrell Murray. That brings up fourth down. Fourth down and 23. And Dooley County is going to go for it. They are going for it on fourth down. And that is an incomplete pass. And number seven, A.J. Smith. Is down. Injured on the play. We'll be right back after this. We can get a player up here. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. here away from it all a guy can get to thinking what makes peanuts america's most popular nut well for one thing they've got more antioxidants than broccoli carrots or even green tea why they're a bona fide superfood with more than 30 vitamins and nutrients and the taste well that's pretty hard to beat yes when you really think about it good things happen for a reason i'm nick marshall and i'm a peanut farmer i dig peanuts so you can dig them too And we are back. That was just an injury timeout. Everybody is fine. No worries whatsoever. Good to see. 
good to see A.J. Smith able to make it back to the sideline. He's, he's fine, thank goodness. And it's second down and five. With 6.20 left to go in the third quarter. So that was a turnover on dot, that, excuse me, that was a turnover on downs by Dooley County after that injury timeout. And we have the Red Devils now looking at a third and five. Tackle made by Montrevious Adams. Montrevious Adams with the stop. Also Jaleel Brown in on the play. Camp two, third down, three yards to go. So we're actually we're looking now at a third down and three to be exact. Again, I'm Garrett Barroge with Play on Sports High School Sports Network, and I am live at Buddy Butford Field in Lincolnton, Georgia. Number 18, Ben Turner gets taken down. And we've seen both quarterbacks on both sides be either sacked or rushed in the pocket. Again, this has really been a defensive game by both by both teams. Um, really, the only thing that separates both teams is that field goal block, which was able to allow Mark Clark of Dooley County take that back and score a touchdown. Um, and there is almost another block. But Montrevious Adams was not able to was not able to get to it in time. But that is a punt by Lincoln County, and now Dooley County will take over at their 36-yard line with 4:44 left to go in the third quarter. Again. Follow us on Facebook and at Twitter at Play on Sports, hashtag GHSA football. For all the best coverage of Georgia football throughout the playoffs, go to WSBTV.com. And that was number 22, Mark Clark, trying to shake some defenders, but not able to let me on the tackle. Mark Clark was only able to get a gain of one on the play. For live scoring and highlights of GHSA football playoffs produced by Play on Sports, go to www.playonsports.com slash GA football playoffs. And that's a nice run up the middle by number 34. Mark Lloyd on the carry. Mark Lloyd on the carry junior running back that's for Dooley County. Lockhart. That was a tackle by Lockheath Lockhart, seven, the sophomore. One yard to go. Of the Lincoln County Red Devils. 3.30 left to go, and it's third down and one. On a Dooley County 44. And they try to go for a QB sneak, but Lincoln County says that. Quarterback Mark Clark on the carry. Tackle made by Jalen Franklin. Franklin on the tackle. It is a fourth down and one, and Dooley County is not going to take the chance, and they are going to punt it. And it's going to be Jamar Norman who's going to be set to receive this punt. And he calls for a fair catch. And he catches it right at the 35-yard line. And that's where 
Lincoln County will set up shop. First and 10, 226 left to go. Energy for the Georgia High School football playoffs brought to you by Georgia's Peanut Farmers. Number four in motion, hands off to number 11. That is Mike McIntyre. And did Mike McIntyre fumble again? No, looks like he was, looks like he was down on the ground. So we're looking down at a second down and nine on the 37. Turner dropping back, throws, and that might have been deflected. And that ball falls incomplete. So again, a third down and nine. And that is a throw and catch. That's number 27. Jalen Franklin, you know, we've seen we've seen Ben Turner do a lot of scrambling in the pocket and finding Jalen Franklin. You know, we're seeing a lot of play action. And that is a sack. Montravius Adams on the sack on Ben Turner and he is firing up the crowd you know you can just tell he's a fan favorite I mean even though he's away at, in Lincolnton I mean the crowd that for Dooley County obviously he's he's their fan favorite Turner airs it out and that is over the head of 26, over the head of Jamar Norman. And, and Ben Turner looks a little bit, quarterback Ben Turner looks a little bit out of sync. You know, he's been rushed all day. He has made some good throws, uh, you know, just short completions. Hasn't, hasn't really thrown that long pass. And Julie County is doing a good job containing him. Turner, again, throws, did not set his feet, did not set his feet, and that ball sails wide to the right of, no of Blake Murray, excuse me, wide to Blake Murray's left, and Lincoln County will have to punt with less than a minute left to go in the third quarter. So really, again, just back and forth, both teams, not much going on on the off offensive side of things. And that ball is just gonna be spotted at the 38, 37 yard line. 37, Bobcats. We'll take over with 45 seconds left to go. It is a cold Friday night in Lincoln, Georgia. Everybody's bundled up. It's tradition. Big time. Big deal around this time of the year to see their Red Devils making deep runs in the playoffs and the hometown crowd is hopeful that their Red Devils can somehow try to muster up some offense and take their 
program back to the state championship. The gain of five on the play. So this, really, if you're Lincoln County, you're feeling pretty good. You're feeling pretty good because you're only down by 10. You've been able to not allow the Dooley County offense and A.J. Smith to, to be throwing touchdowns like he did last week. A.J. Smith last week helped Dooley County defeat Seminole County High School in a Class A quarter final, 34-28. And he, A.J. Smith completed only less than 50% of his passes, but he was able to find the end zone four times in that game against Seminole County. And those were deep, deep balls that Seminole County, unfortunately, their defensive backs could not, could not stop for their sake. But we have not seen that tonight by A.J. Smith in this game. So Lincoln County is doing a good job containing him. And then you can say at the same time, Dooley County has been doing a good job containing, excuse me, Dooley County has been doing a great job containing Ben Turner. So it's been a really interesting game. You, you know, if you've been following it from start to finish, you, you can understand that really, it looks like we have either a false start or an encroachment. And that's going to be a false start on Dooley County, so that's a five-yard penalty. It's going to repeat of second down. I was saying that if, if you've watched this game from start to finish, it, it's been a very interesting dynamic. You know, really, both teams are flashing really good. You know, really good, well, I want to say brilliance. The brilliant players out there. I'm just saying they've been flashing brilliance in certain times throughout the game. But they have not been able to consistently, each team consistently move the ball downfield. And that's why you see a low scoring game. But, um... It looks like there's another flag on the play. We'll wait for the call from the referee. Looks like the flag is picked up. Unfortunately, we're not able to find out what the call was. But it is second down and 15, ball on the 32-yard line. And that was number 22 of Dooley Mark County. Clark. That's Mark Clark. So far, the player of the game, if you will. He's the one that, again, picked up that Picked up the ball after that blocked field goal attempt by Lincoln County at the end of the first half, and he was able to take it 90 yards for the touchdown. So Mark Clark has been the single difference, so to speak, in this game. Clark in motion again, and he gets the handoff, and he's able to fight for extra yards not before he's taken down at the 45-yard uh, line, but he was able to stay on his feet and get a few more yards on the play. So that was after getting a few extra yards. That was a total of eight yards on the play. It is third down, excuse me, it's fourth down and Looks like Dooley County will have to, again, punt the ball. But it was still a good effort. And if you're Coach Jimmy Hughes, 
you want to see your players fight for the extra effort. Another punt that almost goes out of bounds, but stays in bounds, and it is at the 33-yard line, the Red Devils 33, and they will take over first and 10 with 10.23 left to go. Again, join a conversation about high school sports. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Play on Sports, hashtag GHSA football. For all the best coverage of Georgia football throughout the playoffs, go to WSBTV.com. Ben Turner finds a falling Blake Murray. And uh, you can hear the displeasure. You can hear the displeasure from the Dooley County side thinking that pass was incomplete, but they counted as complete. And that moves the ball about 10 yards on the play, moves the chains. And that's an incomplete pass by Turner. Looking for number eight, Zyrikis Letman, who is complaining to the official that he was getting held, but there's no flag on the play. And it is second down. Looks like the scoreboard is, if you're looking at the scoreboard, it's, a, it's, it's not on the third, we're not, the ball's on the 33 yard line, it's actually on the 42 yard line. So, so scoreboard is wrong momentarily. And Monch, and Monch, Travius Adams is able to, able to just grab Ben Turner and throw him to the ground. It, it was, it, it looked effortless. It looked effortless. He didn't really get a good grasp on him. It looked effortless, and he was able to take him to the ground, or really throw him to the ground. And that's just the type of things that you're going to expect out of Mon Montrevious. Adams at the next level, whether you're at Auburn or Alabama or Georgia or Florida. I mean, whoever gets this young man on their team will be very happy going into every game knowing that opposing quarterbacks will have to be fearing this guy in terms of just his dominant presence, his Ability to get to the ball quickly. He's able to break up tackles. Um, he's just gifted with a, um, for his age, uh, just just gifted with a, you know, a, a big body and big size. I'm sure he has a lot of, um, you know, maturing to do in terms of, uh, you know, from a physicality standpoint. But, um, you know, he was compared to, um, he has been compared to uh, Gerald McCoy, uh, who currently plays for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But when Gerald McCoy was in high school, um, and uh, he was recruited by Oklahoma, he, you know, he has drawn comparisons. Gerald McCoy has drawn, or is being drawn comparisons by recruiters with Montrevious Adams. So, you know, if you're Montrevious Adams, you know, I don't know, can't speak for him, I don't know how he feels about being compared to, you know, former players, former high school players who have now gone to college in the NFL, but if you're Montrevious Adams, I would consider that a compliment, being compared to a, uh, a great talent like Gerald McCoy. So, um, I'm sure he will be deciding shortly which team he will go on to play for next year. Right now we are back. It is 8.58. Still score is still 10-0. And a little stoppage in play. Julie County has the ball. First and 10 on the, their 25-yard line. If you're Lincoln County, you still have a little time left to try to uh, put some points on the board. A 10-0 10, uh, 10 deficit is manageable, but Again, with less than nine minutes left to go, you, Lincoln County has to come up with some stops and be able to, unlike the entire game, unlike you know the first more than three quarters, Lincoln County's gonna have to find some way to run the ball. 
and run it effectively, and whether it's throwing different formations, mixing up their offensive schemes, trying to just keep Dooley County off balance. But when you have a guy like Montrevious Adams, who is part of that defensive front line, it can be hard. And that was Shannon Hamilton. And Letman on the tackle. So it's third down and seven. Third down, four yards to go. For Dooley County Bobcats. It's been a slow pace. I mean, you know, thinking back to what I said about how Coach Campbell said that, you know, this is a very lively stadium, that this is the place to be Friday nights in Lincolnton. Well, you know, the most cheering that I've, you know, in the beginning, everybody was intense, fired up on both sides in the beginning of the game. But that punt, that, I mean, excuse me, that field goal block really took the wind out of the sails of the Red Devils' um, side of the field, their crowd. And they've just been, you know, stunned, quiet. You know, really most of the cheering has been coming from the Dooley side. And, but I, I can tell just... Just one big play, if you're Lincoln County, all you need is that one big play to change the whole dynamic, change the whole momentum around, and get your you know home crowd back into this. And that was almost a block. That was very close. Lincoln County almost got a, a punt block there. Three guys were able to rush. By three, three guys were able to rush Montrevious, but he was able to kick it away just in time. The ball is spotted at the 25-yard line. It is first and 10 with 6.51 left to go. And looks like Lincoln County might start thinking about abandoning the running game and just thinking about just throwing. And he airs it out. And that is a catch. That is caught by number 27. Jalen Franklin, I think I got so excited I tried to say catch and caught at the same time. So I apologize for that. But that was a catch by number 27, Jalen Franklin. And that is what that is what we're talking about. If, if Lincoln County is able to make those type of throws in this situation, going with a no huddle offense, spread formation, they got four wide receivers. Julie County's matching up. You got number, oh, almost, oh. and Ben Turner was able to, that ball, it was a high snap, almost came out of Ben Turner's hands, but he was able to catch the ball back in air and not be able to go anywhere, but fortunate for Lincoln County, they still have possession. But I was saying earlier that if you're Lincoln County, you want to continue to just, you can't stop the clock. I mean, you technically, they technically can because they have timeouts, but if you want to keep this momentum going and you want to give yourself a chance, you want to keep on throwing. Now, if you're Julie County, you just want to... And that was over the head of 27 Jalen Franklin. You know, ben Turner is a junior, so he does have one more year. And, you know... If Dooley County does go on to win this game, Ben Turner might be thinking at the end of the game, how many throws I wish I can get back. Because he's been throwing the ball pretty accurately, but there has been throws, especially to number 27, Jalen Franklin, that has been over Jalen Franklin's head or off to, you know, to the side, wide, you know, wide left or right. And that's a nice throw and catch. And that was Tyreek. Zyrikas Letman, excuse me, Zyrikas Letman, he's able to catch the ball. And that is a first and 10 for Lincoln County at the 35 yard line. But again, I was mentioning that there has, been, there has been some throws to get away from, that has gotten away from, excuse me, has gotten away from Ben Turner. So with 5.37 left to go, timeout on the field. First 
Again, join the conversation about high school sports. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Play on Sports, hashtag GHSA football. Again, I'm Garrett Barogian with Play on Sports High School Sports Network. This is my second game I'm calling for the network and um, proud to be here in Lincolnton. I felt welcome coming here. I parked my car, was approaching the field, was uh, talking to a, a, a nice uh, one of the, you know nice gentlemen uh, been living in town you know living in this town for a long time just you know, I just feel welcome you know very welcoming uh, people you know seem really friendly here and um, you know it's nice that uh, you can experience different parts of the state by going to different different uh, stadiums and uh, just getting a sense of what the high school high school football culture like is here in Georgia but we have a uh, Less than five minutes left to go. Turner throws, and that is caught by number three, Blake Murray. And that is a first down. He's able to get out of bounds at the five yard line. And that is the type of play I was talking about that's gonna get this crowd back in this game. Now, if, if Lincoln County can score here, they give themselves a really good chance because with over four minutes left, they still have three timeouts. So first and goal for Lincoln County. Let's see what they decide to call at the five yard line. Got three bunched receivers to the left of Turner. Turner throws, caught. Oh, and he drops it. And Jamar Norman drops it in the end zone. So going back to what I said earlier, what I said, will Ben Turner look back on this game if Dooley County goes on to win? Will Ben Turner look back on this look back on this game and say, how many throws could I have gotten back? But when I looked at that drop, you know, it, it, it you gotta make an you can make an argument that Jalen Franklin has also dropped some catches, so potential catches. So really, it's been hard to discern who you know is it mostly. Turner or is it mostly Franklin who's not completing important plays for Lincoln County but let's see if they can make it up on this play Letman's in motion and he tries to run the ball but no luck there third down and seven with 430 left to go oh and you just if you're if you're a Lincoln County fan that's not what you want to see you know dropping him into the end zone and, uh, you know, it is, you know, he has dropped some passes in this game. Turner dropping back, throws, and that is over the head of number eight, Zyrikis Letman. So now, what does, if you're coach, head coach Larry Campbell, what do you do here? Do you you go with a run? You go for another throw in the end zone? Toward the end zone? Or do you go for the... His first down and four. Let's see what play they decide to call. Turner throws, and another ball over the head of Zyrikis Letman. I think Turner has, throughout this game, has become too predictable. Dooley County has been able to read his every move. Uh, you know, Turner has been eyeing his receivers right after every snap, it seems like, scrambling in the pocket. He's not really, you know, it, it's something you see. It's something you see in, you know, young quarterbacks, whether it's the college level, the high school level, even rookies in the NFL. I mean, when you stare down your receiver, you are m most likely going to get the ball intercepted because the defense is ready to, 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 is ready to just pick that ball off or break up that play because usually defensive backs, linebackers, what have you, 
are mostly reading the quarterback's eye and not where the defender is, or not where, you know, in their case, the offensive player is on the field. And if you're Ben Turner, you're going to try to maybe be a little bit more sneaky in terms of how you want to throw the ball and to who you want to throw it to. Turner hands the ball off to Mike McIntyre, and he is not able to make it to the goal line. So it is fourth down and four. And this is what, what do you do? Uh, if you're Larry, Coach Larry Campbell, what do you have Ben Turner do? Do you have him run another play, or do you go for the field goal? And it looks like Larry Campbell is going to have his team go for it on fourth down. And here it is. This could be the play of the game. Turner and the and the pass falls incomplete and Dooley County is able to stop the Red Devils on fourth down and despite poor field position for Dooley County they could simply try to run out the clock with simple running plays, forcing Lincoln County to burn timeouts. Now, if somehow Lincoln County can somehow force a, a safety or somehow get the ball back and score, now is the time to do it. Because their time is running out. Dooley County calls a timeout. They will have one left. With 3.15 left to go in the game, they're up by 10. Again, for those of you just joining us, thank you for joining us here on your Friday night in high school sports. I am Garrett Barogian with Play On Sports High School Sports Network in Lincolnton, Georgia, where the home team Red Devils are trying to make it to another state championship game to play next Saturday, December 15th in the Georgia Dome, but it looks like the Dooley County Bobcats are spoiling the home team's splendor, if you will, by shutting out the Red Devils 10-0, and the key player of the game for Dooley County was Mark Clark, who was able to run that field goal block back 90 yards for the touchdown to end the first half. And that has been really at another field goal, or one, one field goal by Dooley County, and that has been the difference in this game. Again, both teams have been playing great on defense. Uh, offensively, both have struggled. And uh, you can say weather's a factor. You could just say that both teams are evenly matched. Um, you know, it's, it's impressive that, you know, these two teams haven't played in 14 years. So obviously different personnel, of course, uh, in terms of players. And you can say the same for some of the coaching staff. But... Um, both teams seem like they came prepared uh, and studied each other's defense and offense. But it looks as though that offensively, both teams were a non-factor. And defensively, Julie County was just able to make that one extra standout play. And that's why they were on top 10 to nothing. So if Dooley County does go on to win, again, they will play the winner of Emmanuel and the Wilcox. Yeah, they will play the winner of the Emmanuel County Institute and Wilcox County High School game. And the winner of this game and that game will go on to play the Georgia Dome next week on December 15th. And that is a run by number 34 for a first down 
Mark Lloyd, and he is able to move the chains, and that forces Julie, uh, that forces Lincoln County to burn their first timeout. So two timeouts remaining for the Red Devils. Somewhere Garrison Hurst is saying, man, I wish I was in my back in my high school days running the football. Wonder how many yards he would rush for the I wonder how many yards he would rush in this game if he was still playing. Uh, for those of you know who don't for those of you who don't know who Garrison Hurst is, he's a two-time Pro Bowl selection, uh, two-time AP uh, comeback player of the year who played the majority of his majority of his career with the San Francisco 49ers. And uh, he is the uh, him and Jarius Winter, the two standout um, uh, NFL uh, players who graduated from Lincoln County and uh, Dooley County, actually, with the exception of Montravius Adams, you know, him going on to uh, play for a big time college team, Dooley County does not have any um, current NFL or former NFL players. So, um, you know, both teams. You know, they both have they. You know, one team in Lincoln County has been strengthening their tradition and trying to continue to leave a lasting legacy. While you see Dooley County, you know, in the opposite in the opposite sense, trying to build their program into a continuous contender and you know Montravius going on to play at the next level maybe that will spur other interests by college coaches and teams around the country to look at the talent pool in this area because um, you know it's been a you know for a score that's been 10 nothing uh, you know not a high scoring game but it's definitely been it's definitely been um, exciting to see the just the defense, the, the, the strong defense on both sides. Another throw, or excuse me, another run, another pitch, another run to number 25, Shannon Hamilton. On the game. Shannon Hamilton. And that causes Lincoln County to burn their last time out and um, for Julie County you just have to move the chains a couple of more times and you'll be set to take on the winner of the other semifinal game Energy for the Georgia High School Football Playoffs, brought to you by Georgia's Peanut Farmers. So if you're Coach Jimmy Hughes, to come into Lincolnton, Georgia, and steal a, a home victory from legendary head coach Larry Campbell and his Red Devils. Um, if you're a Dooley County fan, you gotta be, gotta be feeling pretty good about yourself. And is that a, and maybe I have spoke, and maybe, and maybe I spoke too soon. You know, never say never in this game. That was a fumble. That was a fumbled snap by Dooley County. And the score now is 10-6. Score now is 10-6. Trying to make it 10-7 for the Lincoln, Town Lincoln County Red Devils. And wow, just like that, it is 10-7. Oh 
Lincoln County with no timeouts though, but they have, they have maybe a little more time than they might need to try to come back and maybe tie this game and to send it into overtime or possibly score another touchdown and win this game. And I can't believe it because I just was maybe too soon congratulating, you know, as you know, from a neutral perspective, congratulating the hard work from both teams and, uh, you know, the hard work of Dooley County. But, wow, that, that, that couldn't have come at a – that could not have come at a more timely – Timely in a timely sequence in a timely fashion for Lincoln County. So they are getting ready for the kickoff. Let's see if they decide to do a normal kickoff or an onside kick. It looks like they're going to go for the onside kick. Or no, they, they were just changing formation. I think they're just going to go for an, a regular kick. No, it looks like they're going to – let's see what the call is. You know, it's so cold out here. The temperature is getting the best of me. Yep, they're going for an onside. I think the temperature is getting the best of my play calling judgment. <laughs> but that is recovered. That is recovered by Dooley County. And let's see what 254 left to go if somehow Lincoln County can somehow get the ball back and either tie this game up or win this game. And there is life. There is life back. At Buddy Buffett Stadium. Excuse me, Buddy Buffett Field. First down and 10, a toss. And Channing Hamilton tackled for a loss and he's not able to go anywhere. And you're starting to see the momentum change in Lincoln County's favor. Uh, both sides of the field, both teams fans are up on their feet. And the last two minutes of this game is starting to become the most exciting two minutes of this game. Delay of game on the offense for Julie County and they have to move back another five yards. So third down and 18. And if Dooley County cannot convert on this next play, if it's a run, the clock is going to continue, which it is. So not enough for the first down. The clock will continue to run. But Dooley County will have to punt the ball away, which will give the Red Devils about 40 or 45 seconds. It looks like Dooley, will Dooley County burn their last time out? Looks like they're not going to. And they're just going to let. So 
So they, Dooley County takes a delay of game, which is uh, interesting. And Coach Jimmy Hughes keeps them on the field a little bit longer, or keeps them on the sidelines a little bit longer. Now they're going to resume play with 43 seconds left. Fourth down and 11. Montrevious Adams is going to go for another punt. He punts. Fair catch. Jamar Norman. And on the 38-yard line with 39 seconds left to go, no timeouts left, does Lincoln County have it within them to find some way to make a couple key throws, get their receivers out of bounds, either go for the field goal for the tie or try to go for the win. There's Ben Turner scrambling, and he decides to run a controversial, a controversial play call. And if you're Lincoln County, you're looking to spike the ball or try to just... I think the scoreboard says 18.3 seconds left to go, but I thought that when they spiked the ball, an extra second and a half came off the clock. So if you're Ben Turner, you're going to have to rely on this young offensive line to be able to hold Montrevious Adams and the defense to at least give you enough time in the pocket to throw a long ball because a run's not going to do it. You're going to have to try to throw it to a receiver toward the sideline so he can get out of bounds. You probably have a couple more good throws within you. There's Turner. He, he's throwing. And that is intercepted! Intercepted number six by Tay Daniels. And Dooley County is about to knock off the number one seed, Lincoln County. And oh, okay, so that, that, that interception does not stand. That interception does not stand. He was out of bounds. So with 12 seconds left, now Ben Turner is going to get another chance. Ben Turner throwing. And that was almost intercepted by number four. Courtney Clark. That was... And that is a turnover on downs. And Dooley County is just going to run out the last 5.3 seconds left. And they will be going on to the Class 1A Public High School GHSA Championship at the Georgia Dome next Saturday, December 15th, game time, 1130. And if you're Lincoln County, you are stunned. You are stunned to only have put up seven points. But it was a hard fought game, nonetheless. Both teams played great defensively. Offensively was suspect on both sides. So the difference in this game, well, a few differences. Defenses played great, offenses have didn't, but it, one play made the difference for Dooley County, and that was Mark Clark able to return that 90-yard touchdown after that field goal block right at before the end of the half. So what would have been a 3-3 tie potentially going into halftime turned into a 10-0 lead for Dooley County and a little bit too, too little, too late 
for Lincoln County to score on that unconventional touchdown. Julie County fumbling a snap in their, you know, in their end zone. But it was not enough, not enough time for Ben Turner and the Red Devils to find some way to make some key throws or to just move the chains. Uh, you know, I said earlier that Ben Turner and his receiver, Jalen Franklin, probably will be looking back on this game saying, what throws could I have thrown better? What catches could I have made? Um, that one drop catch in the end zone by Jalen Franklin probably could have been the difference maker in this game. Um, you know, obviously, if he makes that touchdown, things probably would have changed. You know, in sports, you look back on plays like that and say, well, what could have been different? But again, in Lincolnton, Georgia, I'm Garrett Barogian with Play on Sports High School Sports Network. High School Sports lives here. Your final score, 10 to 7. Dooley County defeats Lincoln County at home. And again, Dooley County will go on to play in the state championship game. Again, join the conversation about high school sports and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Play on Sports, hashtag GH, GHSA football. And for live scoring highlights of GHSA football playoffs produced by Play on Sports, go to www.playonsports.com slash GA football playoffs. Thank you and have a good night, folks.